Good morning to everyone. Welcome to Global Online. And here we are back with our NTA UGC net preparation for paper one, that is for 2020 and 23 batch, where we have the classes scheduled at 10 a.m. Uh, due to some technical glitch, I was not able to come online. So I'm just sending this uh, session for you so that you can have a consistency in your upcoming preparation. So we are going to start with teaching. We have already started with teaching aptitude and we are doing sessions that is from the basis, basics. So today we are going to see learning styles and approaches in education. Before we go ahead, a quick announcement for everyone. Global Online has a 30% special Diwali offer going on, uh, wherein you will be having 30% off on all the NTA UGC net subscriptions. You can enroll the same. Uh, for that, you can download the app and or else in, can, in case, if you're not able to do so, you can get in touch with us on the given uh, WhatsApp number. The WhatsApp number is given below, so you can get in touch with us for the further details. Let me tell you what does we have for uh, course paper one. That is paper one consist paper one for NTA UGC net. We have a complete course for that for which is starting with the new batches that is October 2022, which consists of full syllabus notes, full syllabus video lectures, daily live lectures, recorded lectures, 60 plus mock test, last 10 years question papers, 2000 plus MCQ PDF. The content is available in English as well as in Hindi. You can join these courses by getting in touch with us on the given WhatsApp number. The course fee for paper one is rupees 4,000. We do have courses for paper two also. The subjects for paper two are listed on the screen. Paper two consists of complete video lectures, full syllabus notes, test series, previous year question papers in the PDF form. As well as we have a full study plan, paper one will be free with paper two if you are exclusively taking paper two. You can, for the same, you can get in touch with us on the given WhatsApp number and the fees for same is rupees 8,000. This you can also do easily by with the help of our um, app. Now, let me tell you how exactly to go with the app. You can, all the Android mobile users can download the app with the help of Google Play Store. That is Google Play Store. This is the interface which you can able to see. You can log in with this interface with this with the help of your registered mobile number. Once you log in with the help of your registered mobile number, you can see this interface. And if you want to or if you purchase the course, it will give you an access for the content. The content is consisting of all the units. The units are divided into video lectures. You can see over here the syllabus mock test to the 2000 plus MCQ PDF, previous year question papers, scholarships test, uh, also paper available in Hindi. So you can go through all this. Uh, with under one roof you can have all the preparation still in case if you have any concerns or any doubts you can get in touch with us on the given whatsapp number now this scholarships test is nothing but the evaluation test which we, we take after every class so after every class you can go on the uh, google online that is, that is uh, the global online app and you can see now we are taking this you no know, so ta1 is the uh, test which we are rightly conducting for all the students who are you know preparing on daily basis so this will help you to give an easy you know preparation strategy on daily basis people uh, students who are using ios they can go through uh, my institute app it will be asking you an organization code you have to give an organization code that is idbst you can download this app and the rest of the process or interface will be same, which you can see with the help of the app. So you can do this, do this process if you are a user of iOS. Now, yes, coming over to our topic now, we have uh, started with topic of teaching aptitude and subtopics we have completed. So basically we have done what is, you know, So basically, we are going to see uh, today the topic which we are going to discuss on. That is the topic of <clears throat> approaches. That is learning approaches we are going to uh, do in detail. And apart from that, we are going to do various factors affecting uh, that is affecting teaching related to methods of uh, teach uh, related to methods of teaching in institutions of higher education. So let's see how these what are the factors and how they are going to be affected. So let's start the session for the day. So first is we are going to talk about various types of learning that is visual learning, auditory learning, kinesthetic learning, social learning, solitary learning and verbal learning. 
so when we talk about visual learning visual learning basically is something which we visualize that is concepts in the form of maps symbols color coding etc when we talk about auditory learning wherein wherein we are giving more importance to what the pitch or the tone kinesthetics where the body movement is involved social that is you know basically where people uh, with you know uh, there where you are aware i mean as in uh interactive session you are aware of the moods and emotions as a part of your social learning solitary now this is very important just remember this uh, this terminology is new so you should know that solitary learning is basically the learning style which prefers you know private and independent learning whereas verbal learning which is consisting of uh, rhymes and tongue twisters in case if you want an easy access or uh, sorry easy method of remembering this types of learning i have done that for you so the learner type visual which is with the help of what pictures diagrams and demonstration auditory that is words and sounds intuitive that is insights and hunches inductive that is facts to generalization deductive that is theory to individual that is specific to general and general to specific actively that is uh, called as even kinesthetics that is physical engagement you can say reflectively it is the form of what it is a form of introspection sequentially that is nothing but series of related steps in a sequence or in order you can say and globally that is large jump or holistic approach so this is basically what learner type and effective learning style so you can get this in the form of mass the following or you can get this in the form of you know uh, code questions also now uh, next we have is factors so what are the factors which affect teaching that is teacher learner support material student teacher relationship instructional facilities teacher administration relationship learning environment or institution and administrative policies so these are the various factors which are affecting you know which affects teaching now let's see one by one so when we talk about teacher it is basically now see here you are not going to get any questions you are they are not going to ask you what are the factors they will definitely give you the statement questions assertion questions or the code questions so if i'm talking about teacher as a factor affecting teaching so what does what are the elements or what are the components which are taken into consideration it is the qualification it is the awareness experience of the teacher uh, subject matter the teacher knows expectations you know what a parent has from the teacher the teaching skills the pedagogy teacher uses methods teacher uses approach towards the uh, towards this learner personality and behavior of the teacher the level of adjustment teacher shows towards you know the mental health sorry level of adjustment and the mental health of the teacher now when i talk about mental health let us take an example that uh, no doubt teacher has to maintain a lot of calmness, you know, patience, dealing with students, dealing with parents. So that adjustment and mental health is teacher, you know, aware of and can she handle it very well. Then we have various discipline and economic factors. Next one we have is learner. So learner basically it talks about what it is talking about physical and mental health. The basic uh, potential a learner has, the level of motivation or aspiration various goals which a learner has set in life and readiness and willpower of a learner to learn to have that curiosity. Next one we have is support material that is with the help of all the audios, videos, test uh, tutorials which can increase the effectiveness of teaching learning process is a part of what is a part of support material. Student teacher relationship wherein the good rapport, uh, you know, discovery, self-discovery towards the social environment positive relationship, learning structures develop with positive outcome. These all is considered as a part of what? It is considered as a part of teacher-student te teacher relationship. Next we have is instructional facilities. Now, instructional facilities where, where is basically it is needed to create a learning. Uh, basically, it is important in order to use certain facilities such as classroom, laboratories, libraries, uh, which enhances the teaching learning process. So your instructional facilities should be in such a way that it enhances your teaching learning process. Now, teacher administration relationship, wherein we are talking about professionalism, we are talking about uh, 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 the goals, education, uh, as well as a cordial relationship between a teacher and administration.
it is very important in order to ensure that you know the teacher administration relationship is following all that professional uh, etiquettes which are must or which is needed next is classroom and learning environment it refers to the physical location the settings the educational you know uh, facilities all this form uh, you can say an enhancement to help the child to encourage the child as well as the teacher to uh, and to take the teaching learning process in a proper environment. Next, we have is institution and administrative policies. Now, yes, now these policies are framed in such a way that the basic, you know, all the uh, basic facilities should be given to the classroom. It should not be, you know, restricted. At the same time, teachers should be given autonomy with respect to what? With respect to teaching methodology. So this is part of what? This is a part of your uh, institution and administrative policies, which is a must in teaching learning process. Now, next we have as various approaches. Now, you definitely get certain questions on these approaches. So, in short, we are going to see these approaches. Mostly, these questions are seen in the form of mass the following. So, let's quickly have a look. The first approach is behaviorism. So, basically, what is behaviorism uh, talking about? It is talking about a learner who is passive who may be, you know, conditioned to learn new behaviors. It can be possible with the help of two uh, laws, that is law of exercise and law of effect. So when I talk about law of exercise, it is nothing but, you know, exercising your action and reaction in such a way that practice makes a man perfect. So it is it is repeating a conditioned response in, 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 in order to ensure that a perfection is achieved with the help of practice. And for that, it is, you know, repeated. A conditioned response is re needed. When we talk about law of effect, it is a principle of reinforcement and punishment. And this was seen in one of the paper about positive and negative reinforcement. So what, do, what does it law of effect means? Like for example, when you want to, if a child, if a learner is showing, you know, the desired output in the form of his behavior, you try to appreciate the child with positive reinforcement. That is ensuring, appreciating the child, uh, encouraging him. At the same time, if the child is, you know, not coming out with the output which is required, his beha behavior is indisciplined. And just to make him realize that, you know, this is not the way to behave. You go with a negative reinforcement wherein you talk about what you talk about punishment. So the child understands, okay, if, if he does this, this is what the result or the consequences will be. And if he does this, this will what the positive impact. So law of effect, you know, is basically related to what? The reinforcement and punishment. That is, if you do something good, the good will be on your way. And if you are doing something bad, it will result into pain and punishment. Next, we have is the gest gest uh, sorry, gestalt psychology. We are going to do this in the form of diagrammatic presentation also in the later slides. Right now, we will just have, you know, uh, what exactly it, it indicates. So, it believes that whole is greater than sum of its part. And this particular psychology is demonstrated with significance of perception. So what exactly it indicates? It shows that the complex learning need not occur gradually with lengthy practice, but it can it can also develop through insight. So it is not necessary that the complex learning always should go with the practice. If you have a correct insight, if you de develop a correct insight, so it will help into what? It will help into the learning. Next, we have is constructivism, which was given by Jane Piaget and Berner. They, uh, it involves, it, it believes that learning, you know, learning involves an active processing of what? Information that each individual activity organizes and construct knowledge for. So basically, it indicates that accommodation and assimilation are basics to learning. So a learner develops new schema. It's nothing but new uh, system or new structure through accommodation so new learning phase takes place through in order to you know in accommodate in order to accommodate or assimilate so if you are uh, in a development stage and with that development stage if you accommodate yourself or assimilate yourself definitely you are going to learn what a new pattern of learning next we have is idealism now this is very some students get confused with this idealism and naturalism so let's have a proper focus on it so when we talk about idealism it is basically the central understanding uh, 
the world that is the mind is the central uh, in understanding the world it gives importance to values no, uh, along with knowledge you know along with um, spiritual mind or along with uh, culture morality and religion the main thinkers were listed so you may have a question on thinkers of idealism also so basically the idealism was uh, the thinkers were Fobel, Kant, Plato, Swami Vivekanand, uh, Swami Dayanand and Swami Arbindo. So they were the one who were the, on the path of idealism. That is, God is the source of all creation. Whereas naturalism, it takes into consideration the whole of reality. Like for example, the senses, you know, as along with knowledge, mind is subordinate to nature, but more importance is given to what? The, the reality. And the main patagonist of this particular uh, concept were uh, Tagore, Rousseau and Herbert Spencer. So you may have sometimes, you know, the questions on the patronist or brain thinkers as per the approach. So if it is idealism, mind or God is the source of all creation. Whereas in naturalism, it talks about what? It talks about uh, nature. Uh, sorry, it talks about whole uh, nature as a whole of reality rather than giving importance to anything else. Next, when we have is pragmatism. Now, pragmatism talks about what the focus is on doing or the focus is on activity. So here, there are no absolute values of life. Truth is created on the basis of experience in the form of what? In the form of your, uh, you know, solving the problems through logic of experiments and scientific method. So importance is given to experiments and scientific methods. The main thinkers here are Pease and John Dewey. With, with respect to what? Pragmatism. When we talk about humanism, it means it is, you know, uh, humans are considered as the centers or humanism believes in, you know, interest and welfare of all human beings. So basically, it is a form of learning which is based on self-actualization. So it, it supports more of mutual tolerance, social understanding and cooperation. Now, rationalism, rationalism talks about what? Rationalism talks about the significant way in which concepts are, you know, gained independently with the help of sense of experience, um, wherein we are talking about what we are talking about, uh, more of, you know, ultimate source of all concepts and knowledge. Now, we talk about existentialism. So, this, it's basically, basically, it emphasizes on the philosophy of uh, existence, freedom, choice or, you know, uniqueness and isolation. So this is with respect to what? With respect to freedom of choice and responsibility. So all this is a part of what? These are the approaches. So if you see the approaches, that is behaviorism uh, in the form of law of exercise and effect, gestalt psychology with the help of, you know, insights, constructivism with the help of, you know, constructing knowledge for oneself, idealism where God is the source of all creation, Naturalism, nature as the whole reality. Pragmatism, which talks about logic. Uh, humanism, which talks about human as a center. Rationalism, which talks about ultimate source of concepts and knowledge. And existentialism, which talks about freedom of choice. So when we are doing the crash course or when we are doing the revision, that time I will give you the easiest way to remember this. But first you should know the concept in detail. And then as in revision, you can go for what? You can go for that particular concept just to know it, you know, keep in mind or have a, a instant uh, understanding of the concept. So in we, let's summarize what we have done today. We have understood the various types of learning. I have given you an easy way to understand this learning. Then we have understood various factors such as teacher, learner, support materials, teacher-student relationship, instructional facilities, teacher-administration relationship, classroom and institution. At the same time, we have studied uh, approaches like behaviorism, gestalt psychology, constructivism, idealism, naturalism, pragmatism, humanism, rationalism and existentialism. So these are all the part of what it is a part of your approaches. So yes, that's all for the day. Uh, next uh, lecture will be coming up with the next concept and extremely sorry for some technical glitch. I need to sort it out. And in live lectures, if you have any doubt in the live lectures also, we will be uh, solving these doubts. Okay, Thank you, everyone.